And sitting in for Dr. Joel Wallach today, we've got Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Glidden. Well, thanks a lot, Doug. It's always so much fun to be here uh, sitting in the chair, right? Sitting in the chair, I feel like I've been given command of the enterprise every time I take over Dr. Wallach's seat. Uh, such a privilege to be here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Peter Glidden here with you. Uh, this afternoon, I'm a graduate of Bastyr University of Naturopathic Medicine in Seattle, Washington. I have 25 years of clinical experience as a licensed naturopathic physician. And we're here to talk today about holistic medicine, about medical nutrition specifically, even more specifically about science-based, clinically verified, boilerplate, foundation medical nutrition strategies that you can employ today, right now, the intention of which are to support and promote your body's built-in, God-given ability to fix itself. Now, you know, Dr. Wallach's masterpiece, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, that was the title, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the name of my website and my radio show, Fire Your MD Now, right? Well, what do these two things have in common? Everybody looks at us and says, oh, you guys hate the MDs so much, why don't you tone it down against the MDs? And we don't. We don't hate the MDs. We have no uh, uh, ill will towards the medical profession. We don't have any latent hostility towards the medical profession. But what we do have is an extremely unique perspective on the delivery of medicine in the United States. And quite frankly, what it all boils down to, when you distill it down to the original essence, the simple fact of the matter is, that your MD, bless his or her hearts, does not know what's best for you. They only know what they've been trained in. And what they've been trained in isn't medicine. It's just one small piece of the pie of medical science. It's referred to as allopathic medicine. Now, right, there's naturopathic medicine, chiropractic medicine, osteopathic medicine, homeopathic medicine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Many different types of medicine. Well, as it turns out, your MD doesn't own the theater of medicine. Your MD only is trained in one small piece of that scientific pie, and it's referred to as allopathic reductionism. Now, allopathic reductionism is most awesomely excellent for surgery when it's absolutely positively necessary, for trauma care, and for a handful of infectious diseases. This is the wheelhouse of the MD, and if this were a perfect, legal, and just society, without any corruption whatsoever by the pharmaceutical industry and insurance carriers and hospitals <clears throat> and professional medical associations, it would be illegal for your MD to treat anything but surgery when it's absolutely necessary, trauma care, and a handful of infectious diseases, because that's what they're good for. Listen, you wouldn't go to a chiropractor if you for open heart surgery, would you? Well, you're a fool if you did. It's illegal, for goodness sake. Chiropractors don't know anything about open heart surgery. That's not their thing. Well, as it turns out, your MD, bless their hearts, remember this is not a condemnation. This is just an observation. Your MD doesn't know anything about how to treat your chronic disease. Because allopathic reductionism argues the human body is an evolutionary accident. It is a biochemical amalgamation of, it's, you know, you're basically a bag of biochemicals waiting for something to go bad. And when something does go bad, the body is incapable of fixing it. There is no spiritual vital force inside the body. There is no intelligence inside the body. It's all just a random game of biochemicals. So the MD is trained not to be concerned with the cause of disease, not to be concerned with looking for a cure to the disease but rather to only be concerned with how to manage your symptoms. So you go to an MD with heartburn. Is the heartburn cured? No, it's managed with antacids and proton pump inhibitors. Is the high blood pressure or the high blood sugar cured? No, it's managed with drugs. How about the arthritis? Is the arthritis cured? No, it's managed with drugs and then surgery. And what about obesity? Well, just cut the stomach out, boys. This is our problem. Well, it's not really a problem. This is our observation, and it is spot-on, 100% accurate. 
The fact of the matter is that the MDs are in the driver's seat of medicine all around the world, not because their therapeutics are better, not because their therapeutics are more effective, not because their therapeutics are more affordable, certainly not, because they legislated themselves into first place in the early 1900s and everybody has forgotten about it. The MDs own exclusive front row seat to medicine because they legislated themselves there and they go out of their way to keep the chiropractors beneath their heels keep the nature paths beneath their heel to keep every other licensed medical profession beneath their heel the illinois board of professional regulation uh, last year sued me for five thousand dollars because i used the word doctor on my website and in illinois you can only do that if you're an md now, this means in Seattle, Washington, as a naturopathic physician, I can deliver babies, perform minor surgery, work in hospitals, legally call myself a physician, order any diagnostic tests I want. It's all covered by insurance. But if I were to do exactly the same thing in Illinois, I'm fined $5,000. You've got to be kidding me. We do not have a free medical market in the United States. And the type of medicine, the philosophy of medicine that your allopathic reductionistic MD is trained in is only good for surgery when it's necessary, trauma, and a handful of infectious diseases. For most of the conditions that most people visit the doctor for, the MD for, most of the time, the only thing that the MD has for you is symptom suppressive drugs which manage the problem. Things eventually get worse. You need another drug, and then another drug, and then a drug for the side effects, and then another drug, and then you go bankrupt, and then you die. This is why Dr. Wallach says dead doctors don't lie, and Dr. Glidden says fire your MD now. It's a simple, honest fact. No brag, just fact. Stick around. Taking your calls when we come back. This is Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And we are back on Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And back with us is Dr. Peter Glidden filling in for Dr. Wallach today. Welcome back. Hey, thanks a lot, Doug. It's always a pleasure to be here. You know, Alzheimer's has risen from obscurity to become the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Dr. Wallach and I are pretty sure we know what's causing it. And I'll talk about that in a second. But what are the MDs saying about it? Well, I've got a study here that uh, was actually published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And uh, what they did was they looked at, uh, it was a a gold standard study, and it involved 613 patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's, and 97% were males. And they say all but one of them was already taking drugs called acetylcholinerase inhibitors uh, that have shown progress in Alzheimer's symptoms in some people. And the participants in this particular study were divided into four groups. And the first got a uh, synthetic vitamin E. The second got a uh, drug called mid, uh, midmanatine. And uh, the third got uh, both uh, vitamin E and the drug. And the fourth got a placebo. And they say that the researchers used a tool called the Alzheimer's Disease Cooperative Study Slash Activities Daily Living Inventory. It measures functional ability and also looks at cognitive outcomes. Followed them for on an average for 2.3 years. Results were that researchers found that the participants in the vitamin E only group had a delay in the clinical progression of the disease and 19% over a year compared to uh, those in the placebo, uh, the placebo group and the vitamin E only group saw their uh, disease decline 3.15 units less on a testing tool. So uh, something going on there. And I've always wondered if anyone's ever done any studies on people that have Alzheimer's and whether or not they took statin drugs. Well, that's what they should because that's our belief in this vitamin E finding, although, you know, uh, you know the end score on the, hey, there weren't enough people to really dial this in, but it's, it's optimistic, right? Vitamin E, of course, is an antioxidant, and we believe that Alzheimer's is generated from oxidative damage to the central nervous system, specifically to the part of the central nervous system that's made from cholesterol, and that's interesting. 75% of your central nervous system, which is your brain and your nerves, are made from cholesterol. Isn't that interesting? All your sex hormones, too, are made from cholesterol. And all of the walls of all of the trillions of the cells in your body are made from cholesterol. Cholesterol is so important to the human body that your liver makes it. 
you can make about 20% of your total cholesterol needs. You need to eat the rest. But the MDs, again, have gotten this completely backwards. Now, before the 1980s, there was hardly any Alzheimer's. If you look at a graph of the um, uh, a preponderance of Alzheimer's disease over the last uh, 200 years. We had nothing, 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 nothing. And then in the mid-1980s, it took a giant spike. I mean, it leapt up, giant spike, like the space shuttle taken off. The only thing different that changed in the 80s was at the very beginning of the 80s, right around 1982, the first statin drug was released to the market. So three years later after statin drugs are all the rage and by the way it's still about the number one or number two biggest selling drug in the world to the tune of 20 to 25 billion with a b dollars of drugs sold every year and i believe that's just in the united states um alzheimer's skyrocketed in the mid 80s after a couple of years of statin drugs being on the market well what does statin drugs do they dry cholesterol up and, and over 95% of the part of the brain that's affected by Alzheimer's is made from cholesterol. So when you dry your cholesterol up and you eat all the wrong foods all the wrong time, you dry your cholesterol up with statin drugs, low-fat diets, and exercise, and then you, av you avoid <clears throat> nutritional supplements, your body doesn't have any antioxidant ability whatsoever. You leave yourself wide open to oxidative stress and oxidative damage. It's like leaving the front door of the house wide open and wondering why it's freezing in the house and wondering why all the rain comes in. Well, it's because you got the door open, knucklehead. you got to close the door. Now, vitamin E is antioxidant. That's how vitamin E exerts its an effect, and it has specific affinity for fatty tissue, which is what the brain is made from. So from our point of view, the MDs have gotten it completely wrong. And this speaks to what I was talking about earlier with uh, the way that the MDs are trained to look at the body. They completely overlook the obvious stuff that's right in front of their faces and lead us slowly to our dooms. You want to get a leg up on this insanity? Call us, folks. We've got the straight skinny. And we're here to help. Hey, Doug, uh, thanks so much. It's not my ears that are ringing. It must be the phone. It is, and we're headed out to Alberta, Canada, and Danica, you're on with Dr. Peter Glidden. Oh, Canada. What's going on, Danica? Hi there, Dr. Glidden. Nice to talk to you again. Um, How are you? First of uh, uh, not too bad. I'll say like you, and I'll get better. <laughs> first of all, I'd like to say hi to my darling in Brisbane, Australia. He's listening at the moment. Very and nice. uh, he's getting a lot of information with listening to the shows and really thinks that you're awesome. So, hi there, <laughs> darling, in Australia. <laughs> you got to love it. And that's one of the, that's one of the things that's uh, worthwhile, you know, talking about here just for 10 seconds is because the, the Internet technology is really allowing us to reach a, a, a big section of the world that was completely unavailable to us before. So, really, I'm expecting a remarkable things to happen with longevity moving forward because all we do is we talk about the truth. And, you know, when people hear the truth, it resonates inside of themselves, and then they try it on, and they feel better, and, they, you know, that's like never fail fudge. So I'm extremely optimistic about the future for longevity, and generally speaking, for the health of the sick and suffering all over the world because we say it all the time, Danica, people suffer needlessly but in any event thanks so much for the call how can i help yes exactly i work in the medical field and i'm really <laughs> oh, aspirated well. with what i see i tell you uh, uh you know that. i look at these people in long-term care and wheelchairs and i think you know there's something wrong there's just something wrong you know and uh so anyway dr glidden I, this is about my son with uh, renal failure and high oh, blood yeah. pressure well, yeah. apparently he's on three blood pressure medications, from what he's told me, and one beta blocker, and he has no heart problem or, or angina problem. Can you imagine? Right. Yeah, well, I can imagine that, because they just throw anything against the wall to see what will stick. Right, right. And back in 2014, February, you, your protocol for him was one anti-aging, healthy star pack original, four yep. ultimate selenium. One Ultimate Daily and one Immortalium, which was on uh, back order. We finally got it, so he just barely started on the Immortalium. And uh, also, I have a testimony, and then i just got a couple more things. Are you ready for this wowzer? I'm sitting down. <laughs> 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 
There's marked improvement in my son's taste. Energy is returning. He is not fatigued like he was before taking the longevity pro, uh, pro, uh, protocol. And there's something else that's coming uh, soon. I will let you know about the percentage of kidney, uh, uh, you know, upgrade. And the numbers yeah. are starting to go up, it appears. So yeah, you got to love it. I mean, nothing better. like results. And because of the because of the holistic nature of things here, uh, Danica, when uh, subjective symptoms start to improve, like mood, energy, sleep, appetite, things like this, when these things start to improve, it's only a matter of time before the uh, objective blood measurements and urine measurements and breath measurements get better. So. I'm, I'm very, very, very happy for you. Remember, healing is a process. It's not an event. So we're all on this horse for the long term. Yes, and also, Dr. Glidden, he doesn't look sick. You know, when you look at him and his, his, uh, his tone, his <laughs> voice and everything, his, uh, yeah. his strength in his voice. And, and you know, he, when you look at him, he doesn't look sick at all, really. Well, you got to love it, isn't it? he's losing a lot of weight because he's yeah. not eating enough well, he used to, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Danica, we're up against the hard break. Stick around, why don't you? I love talking to you, and I, I think there's a couple more questions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been there yet, please check my website out. That's fireyourmdnow.com. I, I, I kind of like the ring of that. We're back after these messages. All right, Doug, thanks a lot. Danica, are you still with me? Yes, I'm here. All right, so I think there was a question coming up. How can I help? Well, there's a few of them, actually. Dr. Glidden, if that's okay. Um, yeah, go you know, ahead. With yeah. It, okay. You know, the blood pressure medications he's on, I believe it's two or three of them, and they can't seem to get the blood pressure down, you know, and so they're going to up the beta blocker, and he has no problem with the heart and angina. You know, to me, that sounds pretty screwball, but, um, you know, I really want him off that medication slowly and then, you know, get off that crazy stuff, you know. But Well, you need uh, to understand... So- from the proper perspective, everything makes sense, and, and and so here's the deal, right? The the beta blockers that they've got this kid on, and the other blood pressure medications are not getting to the root cause of the blood pressure. They're not. It's like painting over the mold in the basement. If you've got water intrusion in your basement, and you don't fix the water intrusion, and but you've just you've got mold, and that's the only thing you do. You just paint over the wallboard. You paint over the wood that's got mold on it. Well, guess what? That's going to last for about a week, and then there's going to be more water intrusion, then there's going to be more mold, and then the whole freaking house is going to fall down. So this is the thing to be more concerned about is not that the drugs are having a negative effect, but that they're not getting to the root cause of the problem. And this is why they have to add another drug or increase the dosage of the drug, or they're just throwing stuff against the wall because they have no earthly idea whatsoever about the operative fundamental cause of the high blood pressure. They think he has high blood pressure because he has a cardiovascular system and life sucks. And it's just a matter of time until something breaks. So shut up and take your meds. And now here's another one, and here's another one, and I'm the doctor, and I know what's best. And they're, at, they're full of you know what. So the better thing to do here is just keep him on board with the program because from our point of view, there are only two things that cause high blood pressure most of the time. Number one, it's a calcium deficiency. He doesn't have enough calcium or magnesium. Usually it's both. Number two, there's a problem with the kidney. We already know there's a problem with the kidney. So when we put him on uh, the program, it's only a matter of time until things start to improve, and that includes the blood pressure. So if it were me and I saw the blood pressure rising, in order to support and promote the structure and function of the cardiovascular system, I would give him one or two extra ounces of the white liquid calcium a day and see if that doesn't cut the mustard. Okay. And the second thing is that uh, I guess with kidney patients, they have to be uh, very careful with water intake. And, you know, to flush out your system with water, being in the medical field to me is very important. And yeah. uh, I don't know if it's to do with the kidney, you know, not operating as ours would, uh, or ours are. And uh, he also says that when he drinks a little bit too much fluid, he knows at what point where he's taking too much fluid, he gets this whooshing sound in his ears. Yeah, that's and interesting. What is that? It's very interesting. No idea. That's an, that's an indication or a representation of the wonderful interconnectedness inside of the human body and holistic physicians observe observe things like this all of the time right 
we we see the relationship between trigger points and between musculoskeletal pain. We see the relationship between an acupuncture point and the the strength and the uh, of the pulse, and we see all these things that the MDs completely overlook. I don't know what the relationship is, but there's something because when somebody's healthy, they don't experience that. So really, Danica, the only thing for you to do here is to lean on Father Time and Mother Nature. Mother Nature and Father Time, they're going to help you here. They're going to help your son here. He needs to maintain the discipline. Give the program more time. Give him a little bit more extra calcium for the next couple of weeks. See if that doesn't ring the uh, blood pressure bell. And in the meantime, you just have to maintain the discipline. Remember, healing is a process, not an event. It's only a matter of time until his body maximizes itself to the ability that it is able. Thanks for the call. We're back after these messages, folks. Stick around. We are back on Dead Doctors Don't Lie with your guest host today, Dr. Peter Glidden, filling in for Dr. Wallach. Welcome back. Thanks a lot, Doug. Who's next? Uh, let's head to Washington, D.C. And Keith, you're on with Dr. Peter Glidden. Hey, hey, Keith. What's going on down there in D.C.? Have the cherry blossoms started yet? No, we got snow on the ground, though. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Has you this know, been a usually, nutty, crazy winter or what? Yeah, D.C. usually doesn't get any snow. We've had snow three, four, five times so far. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the is. polls the polls are shifting uh, or something, man. Something's going on. They're not telling us about it, but that's I think a subject for a whole nother radio show, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, global warming. That's what's going on. <laughs> something uh, crazy is going on, I no, tell you what. But in any event, thanks for the call, man. What's up? Uh I want to talk a little bit I heard the lady talk about renal failure and I've had that for fifteen years. So uh I want to deal with that. But also, because of my uh, catheter, I got an infection. And the infection put an abscess on my spine, and the abscess pressed against my sciatic nerve. Took Ouch. away my legs. Can't walk. Okay, I'm Ouch. starting to walk again now. But I'm under extreme pain. And I'm wondering, where is this pain coming from? I got pain in my joints, right up where my legs go into my pelvis. Yeah. On both sides. and strong on the left, but, it's, you know... Uh, there's pain there. When I stand up, I go through excruciating pain. Yeah. And I have to kind of shake it loose in order to be able to walk. Yeah, you pain know. sucks, doesn't when it? I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, you're so a perfect... What's, you, well, I can tell yeah. you what's up with this, man. I can tell you what to do from our point of view. This isn't This isn't a difficult thing. But really, you know, what I want people in the listening audience to kind of understand down to their bones is that you are a perfect example of the utter, complete, and total failures of conventional MD-directed medicine. Because you've been under the care of the MDs your entire life, and look what's happened to you. You've gone straight to hell in a handbasket, and it's getting worse every year. And does the MD take any responsibility for it? No. They blame you. Oh, you've got the bad kidney gene. You've got the bad hip gene. You've got the bad skeleton gene. Baloney, I do not. You do not. It's their therapeutics that have failed you. It's their understanding of how the human body works that's failed you. It's their complete closed-mindedness to the pharmaceutical method, their their benediction at the altar of pharmaceutical medicine, and their closed-mindedness to any other approach. And even in the face of complete and utter and total failures, they sleep soundly at night because they're convinced that their way is the only way, even though it's an ineffective way for chronic disease and this is why longevity is so important because there are millions of people just like you suffering needlessly just for lack of knowledge where it said right there in the old testament didn't it my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge and this is it man you don't have a bad gene you don't have a voodoo curse you're, you've been eating all the wrong food your entire life, and it's, it's every time you eat the wrong food, it's like putting diesel fuel into an unleaded engine. It's only a matter of time until the engine craps out and something breaks. It's just a matter of time. You wouldn't do that to your car, but we do it to our bodies because we've let the food industry and medical professionals who have no training in nutrition tell us what to eat. 
We've listened to General Mills and Monsanto for 100 years tell us what to eat. And we've let the medical doctor tell us, oh, don't take those vitamins. They're ineffective, and they just give you expensive urine. Baloney. It's nonsense. It's lies. We need to snap out of it collectively across the board. We need to snap out of it. The medical system in this country does not need to be upregulated. It does not need to be downregulated. It does not need to be tweaked, modified, or reformed. It needs to be abandoned because for chronic disease, it does not work. And you are a poster child, which speaks specifically to that. So look, man, from our point of view, everything's connected. The hip pain, the joint pain, the knee pain, the kidney pain, the sciatic pain, the kidney malfunction, it's all connected because it's all happening inside your body all at once and everything's connected. Things don't just happen randomly. There's a reason. So from our point of view, why is this happening? Well, Dr. Wallach, after he did 26,000 autopsies, came to the conclusion that most of the time when the kidney stops functioning, it's because uh, the blood vessels inside the kidney get all jammed up. The actual stuff inside the kidney that processes the urine is fine, but the blood supply is messed up. The blood supply is messed up. It's like a six-lane highway that's gone down to just the shoulder on the road. It's going to be messed up. The blood flow is going to be messed up, so the kidney is going to be messed up. So what causes damage to the blood flow in the kidney? What cause, Well, it's oxidative damage. It's the same thing that causes wine to turn to vinegar. It's the same thing that causes fruit to go bad. Same thing that causes iron to turn to rust. Every time you eat a food that's inappropriate for the human body, it inflames a little part of the human body. And it's only a matter of time until those straws break the human back, and then something breaks, and then you go to the MD, and they cut it out. It's nonsense, man. It's nonsense. So our strategy is straightforward, fundamental, and, and sound. Straightforward, fundamental, and sound. What do we do for everybody? does not matter. I don't care if you're one second old. I don't care if you're 100 years old. I do not care what your diagnosis is. What we do is we stop eating food that's gumming up the works. There are 10 foods you need to not even look at. Me too and everybody else, man. Oh, by the way, this isn't your fault. None of this is your fault. It's your doctor's fault. You're under their care, and while you're under their care, it's their responsibility to make you the best you can be, and they have dropped that ball. I don't want you to feel bad about yourself. I want you to feel bad about the medical professional you've aligned yourself with. That's why Dr. Wallach says dead doctors don't lie, and that's why I say fire your md now because look what they've done to you nothing but i digress so what do we do we clean up the diet you need to stop eating 10 foods you can get that list for free by the way on my website fire your md now dot com fire your md now dot com sign up for my free newsletter it's right there on the front page and you get uh, a list of the 10 bad foods for free it's free it's all free you gotta love free so get that list, stop eating those foods, number one. Number two, you need to give your body in nutritional supplement form the raw materials that it needs to have healthy, optimized kidney function, to have healthy, optimized bones and joints. You know, you put oil and, and transmission fluid and power steering fluid and ant, antifreeze in the car. Well, you got to put nutrients in the body in the same way, and when you do that, it's only a matter of time until your body optimizes its structure and function. So in order for you to optimize the structure and function of your hurting body, the recommendation would be one anti-aging healthy start pack. You want to write this down. One anti-aging healthy start pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month. That's anti-aging healthy start pack. One of those per 100 pounds of body weight per month. And I want you to, you know, bump up your body weight. So if you're 150 pounds, I want you to take a 200-pound dose, okay? Um, so one anti-aging healthy start pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month. One bottle of Ultimate Selenium, S-E-L-E-N like Nancy, I-U-M. One Ultimate Selenium per, 100, uh, per 50 pounds of body weight per month. I'm sorry, per 50 pounds of body weight per month, but I don't want you to take more than four bottles of that a month. One ultimate selenium per 50 pounds per month. One bottle of ultimate daily capsules per month. One bottle of ultimate daily capsules per month. 
one bottle of Immortalium a month, one bottle of Immortalium a month, and one bottle of liquid glucogel plus, liquid glucogel plus per 50 pounds of body weight per month. One bottle of liquid glucogel plus per 50 pounds of body weight per month. Clean your diet up, eliminate the 10 bad foods, get in touch with the person who told you about this radio station. They're going to tell you how to get these supplements at the wholesale price. They're even going to tell you how to take them. Start taking them, follow our advice, and look to see how you feel. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Thank you for the call. I'm excited for your future. Stick around, folks. More to come. We're back on Dead Doctors Don't Lie with our guest host today, Dr. Peter Glidden. Welcome back to the show. Hey, hey, Doug. Who's next? Well, let's head to uh, Tracy, California. And Gerald, you're on with Dr. Peter Glidden. Hey, what's going on, Gerald? Hey, Dr. Glidden. How you doing? I'm good, but I'll get better. Thanks for the call, man. What's up? Actually, I had two questions for you today. Uh, number one, I have an uncle that uh, has advanced stomach cancer. He was yeah. uh, diagnosed with cancer about five years ago. He had surgery. They took half his stomach out. Uh, yeah. And he went through the other processes. And uh, about five years later, which was actually a couple months ago, he was diagnosed with uh, it came back. And actually, he has four months to live, they're telling him. And um, I was thinking that maybe possibly uh, you could suggest uh, something for him that maybe could help him. Well, the first thing he wants to do is sue the medical professionals because they told him they could help him, and they didn't. They subjected right. him to re remarkable stress, re you know, and they failed. And they still have a job. And there's no congressional inquiries. There's no investigation. When the MDs screw up, we give them a pass. We give them a pass. We give them a pass. They have completely failed us when it comes to cancer. And they're the only people that can treat cancer legally in the United States. Nobody else can do it. Can't wow. treat cancer. Can't treat it. It's illegal. That's why, I don't know if you remember, but there used to be alternative cancer treatment centers. Like, like in Mexico, there was one in Tijuana. By the way, Dr. Wallach worked at it. For a number of years, Dr. Wallach was one of the attending physicians on the staff at the Alternative Cancer Treatment Center in Tijuana. They had to shut the doors because they were getting robbed by banditos, and they couldn't, you know, they just couldn't do it. But it was in Mexico because it's illegal to do that in the U.S. The only people that can legally treat cancer here are the people who suck at treating cancer. And, you know, where's wow. the public outrage? There is none. Because we've been signed, sealed, and delivered. The media's in on this. You know, there's five corporations that own the whole freaking world. And they're all in bed together. And it is one gigantic tragedy. It is a tragedy of biblical proportions. So, you know, uh, well, I wrote a book. It's called The MD Emperor Has No Clothes. You can get it on my website. Download it to your Kindle. FireYourMDNow.com. Just click on the store button. I have a chapter on cancer in there with ten questions that every cancer patient needs to ask their oncologist with a witness and a recording device. And if your father five years ago asked his oncologist these ten questions, he wouldn't have had the treatment because the treatment doesn't work. But the MDs are not going to tell you that. You have to pull it out of them, and it is a gigantic crying shame. It's snake oil. Cancer treatment in the United States, by and large, is snake oil, and it is un believable that they get away with it as much as they do. Now, look, we can't treat cancer. We don't treat disease. In my private practice, I can treat disease. If I'm licensed in a particular state that regulates naturopathic medicine, I can treat disease. But in the context of this radio show, giving generic advice, we don't. We don't treat disease with longevity. We recommend medical therapeutics, science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition strategies, the intention of which is not to treat disease, but to support and promote the body's ability to optimize its function. There's a gigantic difference between the two. So in order to support and promote this gentleman's uh, physical body at this point in his life, the recommendation would be, uh, one anti-aging healthy start pack and two bottles of selenium. One anti-aging healthy start pack, two bottles of selenium, 
and one bottle of Immortalium per 100 pounds of body weight per month, plus as much Z radical as he can afford. Z radical. If he can afford a bottle a day, he should get that. If he can afford a bottle a week, he should get that. If he can afford a bottle a month, he should get that. Whatever he can afford on top of the anti-aging healthy start pack, selenium and immortalium. Z-radical, Z-radical, Z-radical. Plus, he has to stop eating the 10 bad foods. So do you. So do I. So does everybody in the flipping planet. 10 foods that if you look at them, they'll kill you. And again, you can get that list for free. FireYourMDNow.com By the way, folks, we're out of time here, but my radio show is picking right up. Check it out. Tune in. Turn on. FireYourMDNow.com is the website to go to to listen to it. Until we meet in person, I'm Dr. Peter Glidden, uh, hoping that you find a way to live long and prosper.